Nomad visas and economic growth. This is Business 7. Welcome to the program. Joining me is my colleague on the financial and economics desk at Namibia Media Holdings, Philippus Usiku. Welcome, Philippus. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Jomari. You must be very excited about this news uh, this week that we're going to get um, Nomad visas. Interesting developments in the market and uh, interesting developments that uh, will boost key economic sectors of our economy. So exciting times for Namibia. That indeed is uh, the situation. If you'd like to find out more about our topics, please stay tuned. Connection. It's in the human touch, the feeling of belonging. It inspires us and empowers us, creates clarity from complexity. It starts new conversations, unlocks the power of advice, and makes an impact on your life. At Alex Forbes, we pioneer insight to provide you with advice that connects your decisions of today to your impact tomorrow. COVID-19, um, a whole lot of new concepts have come about, Philippus, and great news this week that Namibia is going to allow for um, nomad visas. Now, this is going to be such a, a lift of a burden in terms of um, working permits, work visas, etc. Something that we have been discussing for years as one of the hampering blocks in economic growth. That indeed is the case, Philippus. Let's listen to the CEO of uh, the Namibia Investment um, Development and Promotion Board. That, of course, is Nangula Uhanja when she launched the Nomad Visa. Yes, of course, we need to make sure that Namibia, we attract the right people uh, uh, into Namibia, whether they are right people in terms of skills, whether they are right people in terms of investors. Uh, while doing that, it's, it's, it's important to make sure that, yes, we do not allow the wrong people in, but at the same time, whatever we have as our measures of disallowing the wrong people does not prevent the right people who will support our vision. It, it, it does not stand in their way. And therefore, that is some of the things that we have been working with is working closely with Home Affairs and saying, Home Affairs, if we are all between Home Affairs and our office, we are getting a message of, of the means that, uh, of course, Namibians do not just want us to, uh, to, to, to kind of load the country with many people, but to the extent that possible, we want foreign skills. Many countries that were built were built on foreign skills, but also tourism and so forth. What do we need to do to make sure that we balance uh, that activities between uh, bringing in the right people and keeping the wrong people out? So that is some of the conversations that we have been having and therefore looking at the measures that the ministry looks at it and saying, yes, definitely these are good to keep people that should not come in the country away, but maybe this one can also prevent the right people from coming in. And yes, this one, maybe we need to make it more strict because it actually is allowing the wrong people into the country and maybe not, dis not, and maybe not disallowing, uh, uh, the, uh, it's not allowing the right people, but it's not disallowing the wrong people. So from those conversations and engagement, we then thought, of course, we, there is an opportunity that is a gap then. Our current law, of course, enable us to have uh, uh, people that become Namibian citizens, people that become permanent residents, people that come to work in Namibia. And of course, they can come to work in Namibia because we lack skills. But sometimes they come to work in Namibia and then they take up the jobs of Namibians. And then, of course, we have got visitors that come and they are limited that they can only come for 90 days, um, uh, 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 for 90 days a year. Uh, but now there's an opportunity of saying after COVID, there is a group of people that want to come to Namibia because we are now all people that can work digitally. There's people that want to work in Namibia. They will live in Namibia. They will give jobs to Namibians. They will create opportunities, they will spend their salaries in Namibia, but they will not take up their jobs in Namibia because where they, um, 
working, they are working for an employer who is outside the media. So how do we work within the current legislative framework to accommodate those ones? Given that the maximum we can allow somebody to visit is 90 days, um, and the other instrument there is a work visa, how can we do that? So with Home Affairs, we have found the answer of saying, yes, we can do a work visa that restricts the person, of course, saying you can work while in Namibia, but not work for a Namibian employer. And therefore, we kind of put measures there of saying, these are the forms that you can look at. And uh, thank you very much to the minister, to the ED, and to the team at Home Affairs for supporting us. And for saying, of course, then people will apply to NIPDB and we will do that critical evaluation. And if we are happy that that person meets it, then we will make the recommendation to Home Affairs. Of course, Home Affairs will follow their normal processes and then consider the recommendation by NIPDB. So high level, that is really where the journey started. That is where we come from. And we are excited that this project, we probably really, yes, we have had it in our mind for a long time, but to start working on it, it's actually something that was started probably um, less than a month ago. So it took us uh, less than a month between us and Home Affairs to put this together and to launch, us, to, to launch it today. While Namibia and its cities are seen as one of the cleanest countries in Africa, plastic pollution is a big problem. Therefore, it's up to each of us to do what we can to reduce the use of plastic, especially single-use plastic bags. At Liberty Life Namibia, we've taken the decision to turn all our old branding items into reusable shopping bags. It's a way in which we can drive sustainability and look after our most important stakeholder, our environment. If you also believe in sustainability and would like more information, please get in touch. Liberty Life Namibia. In it with you. Nomad visa. Philippus, what is a nomad visa? Yeah, um, a nomad visa is uh, it's a, it's a special it's a special visa for for workers that um, work remotely. Um, this allows uh, foreign professionals to to live, work, and travel freely in um, in, in in the country for a specific uh, period of time. Um, the Namibia Digital Nomad Visa that was recently uh, launched. Um, it's, it's for a period of three to six months. So, so um, foreign professionals can come into Namibia and uh, work, live, and travel as they as they wish for for that period of time. And that is, of course, crucial because we need those skills in the country. And while they are in the country, they can transfer those skills. So. They're not going to take away jobs from the Namibians by transferring those skills. They're going to get the wheel, um, the ball on the roll, to speak, and in the end, create uh, more employment opportunities. Um, how common are uh, nomad visas in or, or nomad uh, workers in Namibia at the moment? Yes, um, the Namibia Investment and Promotion Board has pointed out that um, there are already tourism operators uh, that, uh, that is catering for, for, for this market. Um, and according to the statistics, it, uh, it indicates that um, um, it's more of a balanced gender. Uh, 51 um, shows that it's males and then uh, 49 it's uh, uh, females. It also indicated that um, uh, most of uh, these uh, digital nomads are self-employed, so it's about 71% uh, uh, and only a few uh, are working for companies that enable them to, to, to work uh, remotely. And an interesting uh, uh, figure here is that uh, the average monthly budget for this digital uh, uh, nomads is 187 
1875 uh, US dollars that's that's massive and if you have to convert it into Namibian dollars that's about uh, 28,000 uh, um, so it's, 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 it's very interesting times and, and, and we are really glad to see that there are already uh, people that are showing um, interest in um, coming to Namibia as digital nomads and uh, while also exploring the country. So this initi initiative will really uh, boost uh, Namibia's tourism sector that, uh, that contributes um, heavily to Namibia's uh, gross domestic product. Indeed, and, and one of the, uh, the areas of growth in the economy in terms of uh, future growth too. Um, Philippus, globally, what does the situation look like when it comes to nomads? Yeah, um, currently there are about uh, 40 countries that are offering uh, a, a digital nomads visas. Um, and interestingly, um, uh, in Africa, there are three countries. Uh, that's uh, Seychelles, uh, Mauritius, and um, um, Cape Verde. Um, w uh, it's also interesting to hear that uh, there are um, seven countries that are, that are in the process of um, offering uh, digital nomad visas, and that's our neighboring country, yes, South Africa and, uh, and, and Kenya. Philippus, of course, the million dollar question. How does the process work? How does somebody get a nomad visa? Yes, so the Namibia Investment and Promotion Board is working closely with the Ministry of Home Affairs. Um, applications are already open. However, there are certain limitations uh, to say uh, digital nomads should, for example, not enter the Namibian market or their businesses should not be in Namibia, or their income should not be based uh, in Namibia. So what, what they do is um, applications are open, they go on to the Namibia Investment and Promotion Board uh, website, um, uh, uh, f uh, fill the application form, provide the necessary um, uh, documents, and, uh, and the Namibia Investment and Promotion Board will then recommend to to, to, to the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, whether a visa should be issued uh, to this uh, uh, applicant. Then the uh, mini uh, Ministry of Finance will then verify the documents and then make a, a final, uh, a final um, uh, decision. And thereafter, if should, should your visa be, be approved, and then uh, the applicant will um, receive a notification and uh, they can receive it um, uh, upon our arrival in Namibia. Philip, is one of the amazing realizations from this announcement. Mm -hmm. um, the private sector has been begging government for years, saying, please allow us to get skills into the country. Mm -hmm. And as we saw in the video, um, with um, Nangula Wanja, um, mm. that she said, once they put their minds to it, they finished it within a month. It just shows you that um, what can be done if, if, if you set your mind to it, mm. and it gives fantastic confidence in an institution like the Namibia Investment um, Promotion and Development Board, because obviously they are people who'd like to get the job done. Yes, um, and it's interesting to, uh, to, to look at the figures. Um, in, uh, in 2021, um, worldwide, there was a total of uh, 35 million digital uh, nomads, which contributed um, 787 billion US dollars. That's massive, Jomeri. If, if, if we can only get a little tiny drop <laughs> squeeze of that, our economy will be on a yeah, roll. So, so um, I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a market that uh, Namibia really have to tap in and take full advantage of. Well, we will, uh, that will probably not be the end of that story. We'll keep you abreast of things as it develops. Thank you very much, uh, Philippus. Thank you. Every day. You make choices that make you legendary. Journey together with us on the path to securing your legacy as a member of the League of Legends. With the Select Platinum Bundle Fee Premium Bank offering, you will access tools that will enable you to thrive. If you earn $850,000 Namibian dollars per annum or more, 
you can apply for this offering today via bankventure.com.na for only 447 Namibian dollars per month. Bank Venture, a member of Capricorn Group. The Namibia Statistics Agency recently released our growth figures uh, for the second quarter and we're quickly going to take a look at how uh, the economy performed and here and there give a little bit of more insight. Let's first take a look at um, GDP growth in the second quarters of the couple of uh, years, the past couple of years. Philippus, as you can see, that massive, massive contraction in the second quarter of 2020. That's of course when uh, we had our first uh, COVID-19 uh, case. But um, if you look at the subsequent years, mm -hmm. 2021, we um, uh, sort of bounced back with 5.5 and then this quarter, this past quarter, 5.6. Mm -hmm. What is very important though, Philippus, is, is that one has to bear in mind that as you can very clearly see there, that 5.5, plus percent that we've done in the past two quarters yeah. of um, the past two years or this year and last year rather comes from that very very low yeah. base and we often hear economists saying coming off a low base and we don't know what they mean there you can absolutely see that uh, that massive contraction there um, just because we've got five percent growth doesn't exactly mean that it's it's robust growth it is it is barely a recovery moving on to the next slide that is real GDP and nominal GDP in a second quarters. Uh, Philippus, real GDP, what is that again? Uh, this is um, uh, uh, GDP figures that are um, uh, adjusted for inflation. Um, as you all know, uh, inflation is the increase in the prices of goods and services. So it, it does not, if, if you do not take inflation into account, it does not really give um, a clear picture, a clear indication on how you have performed because um, inflation erodes um, uh, the value of, 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 of your wealth, if, if, indeed, I may, indeed. if I may put it that way. Yeah. And if you, if you don't adjust those D GDP figures um, for inflation, then you will not be... Um, comparing apples with apples, uh, <laughs> so to speak. Because if you look at your nominal GDP there, in the past quarter, we can see that is uh, quite massive, about 48 billion. Um, and it's significantly higher than that of the second quarter in uh, 2021. However, if you move over to your real GDP, that's the moment the GDP gets adjusted for inflation, it becomes more into perspective. Um, so you can see that we haven't really done all that much better than we did a year ago. What's also interesting from your real GDP um, figures, Philippus, is that if you trace it back a, a few years, you'll see that our GDP, our real GDP, um, in the past quarter is virtually on par of that of 2017, which gives you an idea of the massive um, impact of the recession and uh, COVID-19. Philippus, we're taking a look at agriculture and forestry. This is always a very interesting graph to watch because it's, it's, it's nearly as it's inverted. Um, because when you have positive growth, um, that very often means that people are pushing, farmers are pushing cattle onto the market, yeah? So when it grows negative, it actually means that very often um, they, they retain the cattle, they're building the herds. Um, so um, for the layman, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't always make sense. Um, especially in the drought areas or drought years, we can see massive growth in, in agriculture because that's when the, the farmers get rid of the cattle mm -hmm. and push it on to the market. Mm -hmm. So we can see the uh, virtually um, no growth in the first quarter of this year, 1.9 in the past uh, quarter compared to, let me have a look, negative growth of uh, 2.1 in the second quarter. Our next slide shows uh, construction. Uh, Philippus, this is one of the sad stories in the Namibian economy. Um, 
at this stage, and I simply cannot see. Um, I, I don't know how we're going to turn that around. Mm. Um, construction incredibly, incredibly deeply in the red. Interestingly enough, when I did those figures, I saw that the monetary value of um, construction that they virtually pumped into the economy, the sector itself, in the past quarter was about 400 million. You know, um, prior to, um, if you look there at maybe 2015, Prior to that, in that region, more or less, we spoke about billions that came from construction. But the Construction Federation Industries this week again made a plea. Tell us more about that. Yes, uh, the Construction Industry Federation of Namibia um, came out to say they have been lobbying um, government since 2006 yes. uh, to create um, a council to regulate the, the construction industry. Um, as they believe this will um, uh, uh, reap fruits such as um, addressing uh, poverty issues, unemployment, improving the quality of, of, of structures, and also ensuring that, um, that uh, uh, projects are, are completed. As it is not a secret that uh, there are projects that have been neglected and no one is being held uh, accountable. So uh, the, the federation is of the view that um, should a, a regulatory body be established, um, uh, taxpayers' money will be uh, utilized uh, efficiently. And isn't it such a stark contrast? We've spoken just now about what the Namibia Investment Promotion Development Board did. Once they put their minds to it, within a month, done. Here, the construction federation industry has been lobbying since 2016. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. That it sometimes feels as if we just don't take the economy seriously. <laughs> anyway, returning to our growth figures, let's take a look at the next slide. That, of course, is the, the wholesale and retail um, section, Philippus, and um, I, I love this particular graph. Uh, uh, our colleagues here at uh, Namibia Media Holdings of a, it, to me, it looks like a trolley that's falling over. It's not really <laughs> like that, but it looks like it because yeah. that, in effect, is what is going on in wholesale and retail. Um, people don't have buying power. Um, it's, it's, it's tough economic times. Um, people have lost jobs. Um, uh, inflation is on the increase. You are unable to buy the same good you used to buy in the past. So it's, 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 it's tough and um, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough and obviously that uh, has an impact on that um, wholesale and uh, retail. Yes, uh, and what is worrying about those figures in particular as is that wholesale and retail is uh, one of the strongest pillars of the Namibian economy. So if that doesn't perform, the economy doesn't perform. All right, what do we have up next? We've got tourism. You are a big tourism <laughs> um, guru, Philippus. Uh, once again, we see that massive contraction in 2020, uh, 20, nearly 45% down. And then it sort of bumps back. But once again, coming off an extremely low base, past quarter we have had growth of 8.9%. But there's, it seems like it's an unfolding positive story. Um, recent stats, what does it tell Indeed, us? It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, positive development. Um, um, tourism um, um, expanding by 8.9% during the second quarter in uh, uh, 2022. And there are very interesting developments. Um, for example, uh, the national occupancy rate in um, July came in at 51%. Uh, that's, that's massive and uh, it could be attributed to the increase in inflows of uh, regional and um, inter international tourists and also the government's deci uh, decision to scrap uh, the PR, uh, PCR uh, COVID-19 test to, to ensure that um, tourists come, come and go as they wish. Yes. And, and yeah, so and uh, also we have seen some airlines that started uh, flying to Namibia, which is also a very positive development. And inter interestingly, um, the Hospitality Association of Namibia recently pointed out that there are tourists that had to cancel their trips to Namibia just because they were 
uh, insufficient rental cars, for example. Exactly. So some had to cancel, some had to postpone. So it's, it's really a positive development and, and, and the outlook uh, looks bright. Well, uh, it's not often that we can um, share good news on this program, so it's wonderful to have <laughs> some uh, positive stories here too. I think we have one more slide there that of course is mining and acquiring mining the other backbone of the Namibia economy if one can have two of course wholesale and retail one of the others um, huge increase there too once again Philippus and uh, that's mainly because of uh, diamonds and uh, to quite an extent uranium of course um, diamond production uh, looking very good at the moment with a Deb Marine bringing in the Benguela gem um, that is, I think it's the most advanced uh, diamond mining ship in the world. Yes. The International Monetary Fund recently um, released their global growth outlook. Uh, not all that positive, mm -hmm. but at least some growth. Um, at least they are not reflecting at this stage a global recession as has been feared uh, earlier this year. We're going to play out with this video uh, showing the IMF's global forecast and then from us Goodbye until next time. Goodbye. <laughs>